Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Pointing Not Sharp. Today we're taking a look at the Turkish model of 1935 uh, bayonet. Now this is the made new model, uh, or what's referred to as the made new, because uh, this particular pattern of bayonet, there's a whole different, you know, a lot of varieties. So Turkey obtained a lot of bayonets from different places and shortened them to a uniform size, and uh, they're all called the model 1935. Like I've got a couple here, I'll go into them in a minute. Uh, but then they also made their own bayonets brand new, which is what we have here. Um, so these were made to fit the model of uh, 1893 and 1903 8mm Mauser rifles that uh, Turkey was using. And um, this particular bayonet, so the made new version, they're made by um, Askara Fabrika, which is the military factory in Turkey, uh, as marked on the bayonet. But I'll get to the markings shortly. I'll pull it out so you can have a look. Now, it's unclear how many of these were made and what years they were made. Considering it's a model 1935, I'd assume they produced from 1935 onwards. But it's unclear for how long and, um, yeah, how many were made. Uh, they do have serial numbers, but I assume they're matched to rifles initially. But, hey, the serial number could also reflect how many were made in factory. I, I don't know. I couldn't find the information. Now, as I said, there is a huge variety of these bayonets, the Model 1935, and um, a couple I've got here, got like the, uh, the German Ersatz bayonet, which have been shortened. I've also got the German 9805, again shortened. But um, you find pretty much anything they can get their hands on, they shorten down and call the Model 1935. And even the made new model that we have here, there's a bit of variety in uh, the configuration of them. Uh, they're usually uniform, but occasionally there's a couple of little uh, changes. Now, this was the last bayonet made by uh, Turkey for their Mauser rifles. And um, later on, they're actually uh, modified to fit the M1 Garands that were supplied by the US. So after the Second World War, the US was supplying M1 Garands to a number of countries, including Turkey. I can't remember the exact numbers. I think it was in the hundreds of thousands, probably. It was a lot of rifles. Um, it's probably only one Wikipedia search, one Google search away, not Wikipedia. Wikipedia is a terrible reference. Um, but yeah, these bayonets were used in the Korean War uh, with the M1 Garands with the Turks because um, the Turks received M1 Garands without bayonets, much like a lot of other countries like uh, Greece and they had to source their own. And they found it was easier just to modify existing model 1935 bayonets by either adding a new cross guard with a slightly smaller diameter, or larger, I can't remember, I think it was smaller, diameter muzzle ring, or even adding an attachment to the rear of the muzzle ring to um, make it fit the M1 Garand. Now, I'll jump into the actual construction of this blade, and um, being Turkish, it's pretty crude, it's pretty heavy, it's not great, but having a look at it, it's got a very effective point on it. Like that is a, a very sharp tip. Um, usually Mauser bayonets aren't quite this sharp. Usually they're a bit, I don't know <laughs> how to describe it exactly. They're not usually this pointy. Anyway, bit of a false edge, nice true edge, not sharp at all. Doesn't appear to have been sharpened. Got a circular fuller running down either side of the blade. Now, what's really unique about this blade is the weight. This is a heavy, heavy blade. Uh, it's a lot heavier and a lot thicker than it looks on camera. Uh, on camera, it looks like just another Mauser bayonet, but I reckon this weighs you know, double what a normal bayonet would weigh, uh, Mauser bayonet would weigh. And moving back to the cross guard, like just look how thick and how solid that cross guard is. Like that, that is a really thick piece of steel just slapped on there. And from there, it's pretty much what you'd expect from a uh, mouse style bayonet, just wooden grips, riveted on, uh, full tang. Moving down to a mouse style pommel with just a uh, circular push button. Not very smooth, it's a bit crude, probably not the best fit being um, Turkish. And then a Mortise. Now you'll notice there's no hole down the bottom or circular piece down the bottom to accommodate a cleaning rod. So this will not fit your Mauser 98 style rifles. Uh, as it's not supposed to. It's supposed to fit the 1893 and the 1903. 
I'll pop that down. We'll have a quick look at the scabbard. So I've got the scabbard in a frog here. It's incorrect frog. That's a Yugoslavian uh, M48 frog, but um, not uncommon to find uh, the Turks using whatever they can get and mishmashing them together. I mean, I've seen these or the um, cobbled together versions of this bayonet from British P1907s from you know, virtually everything. But we've just got a steel scabbard, nothing too fancy. Uh, this one's actually nice compared to some of the ones I've seen. Uh, ball finale down the end. And yeah, just pretty standard scabbard. The frogs that they would have are usually your um, your Mauser style of frogs. So what the Germans were using in World War One and World War Two. I don't know the correct uh, name for them, but um, they're pretty nice. Um, one other thing I should mention about the construction of the blade. So this is the typical version you'll find. There is another version where the pommel actually extends about another half an inch down the handle. Just a lot more metal on the um, on the end there, but they're a lot less common. You don't come across a terrible number of those. Now, finally, I'll cover the markings of this bayonet, and um, there are not a lot. So on one side of the pommel, we have a serial number. This one is quite a high number. I'll read it out. We've got 153597. Again, I don't know if that matches a rifle or if that's uh, number of production or anything else. I don't know. The only other marking you'll find is here, which is um, ASFA, and that's an abbreviation for Ascara Fabrica, or the military factory where they were produced in Turkey. Now these bayonets are very common, quite cheap, quite easy to come across, and um, very, very sturdy. I can't find a terrible lot of information out there. I know there's one or two sources I could probably track down, but, um, I haven't uh, had any luck yet. It's actually a book I want to get my hands on. It's reasonably cheap from the author at the moment, but um, I still haven't got it as yet. I might hold off doing my uh, ersatz, uh, Turkish ersatz bayonets until I've got a copy of that book. But yeah, um, I thought this would be a good video to do because this is a very common bayonet. A lot of people have them in their collections. There's not a terrible lot of information out there on them. They are um, a bit harder to research than some of the others, but being Turkish... Uh, Probably not a lot of people care. Uh, Turk bayonets have a reputation for being trash and um, post-Ottoman Empire, that, that's kind of true. They are pretty trashy, they're a bit crude, they're very heavy, but this is a very effective knife. Um, yes, it's incredibly heavy for a bayonet, but this is definitely going to do the job. Anyway, guys, I don't really have anything else to uh, say about it. It's um, quite a nice one, don't mind it too much, but... Um, if you made it this far, thanks for watching.